From the mid-latitudes of the northern hemisphere, the view to the south is dominated by three bright stars, Deneb, Vega and Altair. Strung high across the Milky Way, they form the Summer Triangle, not a constellation, but a seasonal signpost for observers in the north. To the right of the triangle, and outshone by Vega, its brightest member, lie the stars of Hercules. They're difficult to spot and are best identified by the box-like keystone of four central stars. South of Hercules is Ephesus, another dim constellation. Ephesus is entwined with a serpent. Its head, serpent's caput. Serpent's cowder, the tail. Our mission, however, is in Hercules, the constellation of the hero. At this season, the strong man is set upon his head. We approach the four stars of the keystone, all visible by naked eye. Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, and Pi. But Hercules only glitters through small telescopes. Chief in its treasures, M13. This globular cluster is so bright, it's visible by naked eye on clear moonless nights. The same goes for another globular cluster, just up from the keystone, M92, at 26,000 light years, slightly more distant than its neighbor. By an arm of Hercules, NGC 6210, a planetary nebula around a dying star, South once more to Ephesus. Like Hercules, Ephesus comes alive only through binoculars and small telescopes. Here the globular cluster M12, a rather loose collection of stars, and virtually the twin of M10 next door. Still in Ephesus, to RS Ephuki, a binary system that explodes every few decades or so. A dense white dwarf unsettles the system as material is drawn from the larger star, a case of recurrent stellar indigestion. Again in Ephesus, and visible in small telescopes, Barnard's star, a dim red dwarf that's so close it has the greatest apparent motion across the sky. As it passes the Sun in 10,000 years' time, Barnard's star will be our nearest neighbor. Ephesus is where the last supernova was seen in our galaxy. Called Kepler's supernova, it erupted here in 1604. Next door to Ephesus, in Serpent's Cowder, M16, the evocative Eagle Nebula. At its heart, the Pillars of Creation. Pictured here by the Hubble Space Telescope, this column of gas and dust, four light years high, is cool interstellar hydrogen, where stars are born. Although this is Hubble, the Eagle Nebula is a sight to behold in a moderate telescope. Still looking south from the Northern Hemisphere, the brightest star of the Summer Triangle, Vega, signposts its own little grouping, the pattern of Lyra. It may be small, but this constellation of the Lyre, or Harp, is prominent. Indeed, Vega is the fifth brightest star of all, with 50 times the luminance of the Sun and just 25 light years away. Vega is bound to be bright. Immediately to its left, is the smaller star, Epsilon Lyrae. In fact, a double star through binoculars. But in a modest telescope, the two are four, a pair of binaries orbiting a common center. Also in Lyra, and visible to the unaided eye, Beta Lyrae. It's a pair of peculiar stars, an eclipsing binary. They spiral hot gas into space. They're so close, mutual gravity makes them egg-shaped. Next to the odd couple, the Ring Nebula, M57, well seen in moderate telescopes. East of Lyra is Cygnus, the constellation of the Swan. 
Cygnus straddles the Milky Way and a dark lane called the Cygnus Rift. Actually looking like a swan, Cygnus is one of the few patterns to resemble the creature it represents. North of the swan's tail, Deneb, lies M39, a cluster of some 30 stars, easily seen in binoculars. At the swan's beak, the glorious double star, Alberio, or Beta Cygni, appears single by naked eye. Through a small telescope, the pair separate. They're so far apart, they take over 7,000 years to orbit each other. To the tail again, and a familiar shape in a strange location. On the left, the North American Nebula, NGC 7000, just visible by naked eye. And here, the duller Pelican Nebula. In a wing of the swan is NGC 6826, the blinking planetary nebula. Through a small telescope, concentrate on the central star and the nebula disappears. In the other wing of the swan, to a supernova remnant, the Cygnus Loop or Veil Nebula. The western part can be glimpsed in binoculars. The eastern segment needs a small telescope. In the neck of the swan to an X-ray source, Cygnus X1. A blue supergiant seems to be losing material to an object smaller than Earth, but with seven times the mass of the sun, probably a black hole, source of those X-rays on the right. Finally in Cygnus, close to its central star, an exploding galaxy, Cygnus A. From the core, energetic particles shoot to this gigantic lobe. At the other side of the core, a second lobe. Invisible optically, this is a radio image. South from Cygnus, another bird, Aquila, the constellation of the eagle. Like Cygnus, Aquila spans the Milky Way with its brightest star marking the southern tip of the summer triangle. Flanked by fainter sentinels, brilliant Altair. Altair spins so fast, it's one-sixth wider than its high, an effect of centrifugal force. Southwest of Aquila, Scutum, the tiny constellation of the shield, has no bright stars. But this is a rich area of the Milky Way, and through binoculars, Scutum has the stellar vista of M11, the wild duck cluster. A little lower, another open cluster, M26, good in small telescopes. At the other side of Aquila, to the northeast, a gaggle of small constellations. The first, lower left, is Delphinus, the dolphin, a faint but distinctive pattern. Of its five main points, we focus on the dolphin's nose, a double star discernible in small telescopes. It's Gamma Delphini, a showpiece, with the right-hand star twice as bright as the other. Right from Delphinus, is Vulpecula, the constellation of the fox. An unremarkable pattern, it lies in the Cygnus Rift. But off the eastern tip, Vulpecula has the Dumbbell Planetary Nebula. Visible in binoculars, it's one of the finest in the sky. At the south of Vulpecula, the Coat Hanger Cluster. Through binoculars, six bright stars in a row and an inverted hook. Sagittar, the diminutive pattern of the arrow, is the third smallest constellation, but it's easy to spot in this fertile region. Close to its shaft is the loose globular cluster, M71, a fuzz in binoculars, stars in a moderate telescope. Southeast in the arrow, a recurrent nova. It's the blasting binary of WZ Sagittai, Our last look south from the Northern Hemisphere starts with Antares, brightest star of Scorpius, the pattern of the Scorpion. Up through the wealth of the Milky Way are familiar constellations, the uppermost signposted by the Summer Triangle. But this southern panorama is incomplete. 
From the Milky Way at the horizon comes Sagittarius, the constellation of the Archer. To the left, Capricornus, the stars of the sea goat. And farther east, Aquarius, the water bearer.